Hello everyone, I'm Lafir back again with another Awakening Chaos Era video. So in today's video, I'll be creating a guide on how to clear the Ash Magistra Hell Mode Stage 3. And this theme that I'll be showing you can also be used for the Hell Mode Stage 4, depending on how well you gear your damage dealers. So let's head over there. So this is the Arcane Dominator for the Ash Magistra Hell Mode Stage 3. I've also used the, the same theme to clear the Hell Mode Stage 4 as well. But this one will greatly depend on how well your heroes are geared, especially for your damage dealers, because the the differences between Helmet Stage 1 and 2, right? I mean, these two, Helmet Stage 1 and 2 versus the Helmet Stage 3 and 4, they require your heroes to be built with high amount of damage. And in order to achieve that, right, you need to max out your elemental power, which is uh, this one. So if you head over to the combat uh, window and click on the elemental power, it's recommended to have at least maxed out your uh, attack uh, stats here in order to deal as much damage as possible to those enemies in the Helmo Stage 3 and Helmo Stage 4. This is applicable to all uh, Arcane Dominator for Helmo Stage 3 and Helmo Stage 4. And another important thing to take note of is the Helmo Stage 3 and 4, they will drop favor gears as you can see this type of gradient, the purplish and, and the other background color here. This is to indicate it's a favor gear. Favor gear will have some additional stats on top of these uh, substats. And one thing that makes this uh, Helmut Stage 3 and 4 difficult across all of the dungeons in the Arcane Dominator is they have addition, the, the boss have additional uh, abilities. So for the case of Ash Magistra, they have this specifically for Ash Magistra, the fire imps around the uh, fire boss, right, when he summoned them. Those fire imps have a unique uh, passive skill that upon receiving fatal damage, fire imp ignores this instance of damage and recovers 30% of max health. So for instance, if your damage dealers are able to deal maximum amount of damage to kill off those fire imps, right? Those fire imps will be like revived and will be healed with 30% of max health. Then you need to perform another AOE attack at the same round in order to kill to kill the fire imps around the fire boss. So that is the main differences between the Helmo Stage 3 and 4 against the Helmo Stage 1 and 2. And apart from that, the boss AI also will be slightly different. He will cast a fire bomb. Okay, this one flame bomb. The target priority for the flame bomb, right? For Ash Magistra Helmo Stage 3 and 4, it will only target the ones that has the highest HP. So if you want the flame bomb to drop on a specific hero on your team, you need to make that hero the highest HP or highest health. Alright, those are the, the important information to know before you uh, try to attempt the Helmo Stage 3 and 4. To demonstrate the battle, I'll be skipping the formation to show you the heroes that I use as well as the spells and also walk you through the battle because it's really important on the turn sequence as well as the hero's uh, turn. Alright, so these are the heroes that I'll be using to demonstrate the Ash Magistra Helm Stage 3. So I have uh, here is Zidlin, William, Opal and Natalia. Opal and Natalia are my primary damage dealers to take down the enemies. Uh, Opal is basically like a support hero to deal extra damage whenever all my allies perform their attacks because she's a great joint attacker hero. Natalia on the other hand will be my primary AOE damage dealer to take out the fire imps around the fire boss. And then William will be there to provide the defense down and also improving the overall uh, damage output of my damage dealers because he has a unique trait that improves the basic ability damage by 60%. And apart from that, he's there to apply the counter attack buff so that Natalia will have sufficient buff to attack all of the enemies as well as the counter attack buff to perform the second round of uh, attack. And then Zidlin on the other hand will be there to apply his curse. His curse allows uh, the enemy to receive double damage upon the curse debuff uh, expires. So you need to deal as much uh, damage as possible when the curse is applied. Apart from that, he's also capable of applying uh, shield and heal over time whenever your hero takes damage. Alright, and for the spells, I have Sundering Purgatory to apply the defense down so that the enemies will receive more damage. And most importantly, Gaius Renewal so that your heroes have some supplementary healing because there's no dedicated healer here on this team. Alright, so let me show you the battle. Alright, so I'll put this on manual mode. So for the first part, right, I have set up William to go first. He'll be there to apply the Sundering Purgatory, ensure that he has sufficient focus, at least about 80 to 100% focus, to apply the defense down on the enemies. Ok, 
Okay. And on auto, right, he'll be using his order, uh, order advanced ultimate ability to also cast a defense down. And next, Sidlin will use his Omen of Demise to apply this curse. Basically, this curse allows the, the enemy to receive double damage upon the curse is expired. But somehow the AI is not that really smart because he uses this on the uh, enemy mob rather than on the boss compared to like uh, stage 11 and stage 12 of the dungeons. And then I have speed tune Opal to go before Natalia. You can, you, you can either set Opal to go before or after Natalia. However, it really depends on your damage output of, Nat uh, of your Opal. If your Opal uh, does uh, less damage and, and unable to finish off the fight aim, you need to speed tune Opal to go before Natalia, like, like right now. If your Opal has a high amount of damage, you have some mastery books on her, then you can set up Opal to go uh, after Natalia. It, it doesn't really matter at, at the point if your Opal is strong enough. If your Opal is not strong, set her to go first before Natalia. So she will use his, her ultimate ability, Soul Catcher, on, on one of the enemies here, especially the, the big fire imps here. And then Natalia will perform her ultimate ability, Arcane Nova, to wipe out the first two uh, enemies in the, on the front row. And then Op Opa will perform her, her joint attack because she has this unique buff on herself already. And then... Alright, so as you notice, right, this fight aim just not attack Zidlin. The the target priority of the enemy that you will target the highest health. So as you as you see here, my Zidlin has higher health compared to William. That's why he attacks uh Zidlin. In case if there are two enemies alive, right, you will attack uh Zidlin first, followed by William. So it's best to have to leave at least one enemy here. So that you will not damage these two heroes, otherwise right, you need to set up uh, both of them in like revival set. Because right, if you if William receives a high amount of damage from the enemies, his AI will you will use this guy's renewal. We, we do not want guys renewal to be cast during the first uh, two wave because it's a waste. We want the guys renewal to be cast during the boss wave. This is really important because it provides additional buff to Natalia to deal more damage, as well as to increase the survivability of your, uh, your of your squishy damage deals such as like Opal, who does not even have a, a guard set to provide the shield, and she's pretty squishy, like ten thousand health. So it's best to uh, ensure that there's only one enemy alive during the first wave, and apart from that. If uh for, for your Zidlin, right, it's recommended to heal him in the revival set so that he'll be able to heal his health so that he won't be need he, he won't be needing the uh, what's this called? This guy's renewal to, to, to heal him up. So during this wave, William will use his order of whole position to apply the counter attack buff. This one can be a random one. He can apply the defense up buff to any of these heroes. And then Zidlin will perform his A1 ability, which, which uh, Opal will join attack. And you notice that the first wave, right, Natalia only attacks once. This is also really important. Natalia can only attack one time per wave. If she attacks more than two times in one wave, right, you will screw up the, the turn order during the boss wave because, right, uh, Natalia has a passive skill that, has, that provides this immune up buff and attack up buff. So you want it so you want the Nat Natalia passive skill to only trigger during the first wave and only on the boss wave. So during uh, this wave, right, uh, William will perform his uh, default ability on the big fire im here. Then followed by Zidlin. Zidlin will perform his uh, ability on the, the big fire im, And then Opal will try to finish off the, this uh, fire im. Okay. And by this wave, right, your the uh, Natalia must be strong enough to wipe out all of these enemies. If it, if your Natalia is not strong enough to wipe out these enemies without the defense down buff, right? You need to build your Natalia strong enough uh, to 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 use this uh, team composition. Otherwise, you you won't work. So during the boss wave, right? Natalia, uh, 
uh, William will perform his uh, ultimate ability. This one is an 80% chance to apply the defense down. And then Zidlin will perform his A1 ability. Followed by Opal. Opal will use her ultimate here. And then followed by Natalia. As you notice, right, Natalia now triggers her passive skill, Arcane Ward, which applies the attack buff and immune buff on this round itself. So she has uh, at least 4 buff, as you notice, shield buff, counter attack buff, attack buff, and immune buff to attack all of the enemies around the fire boss. If she does not have sufficient buff, right, she will not be able to attack all of the fire imps around the boss here. So Natalia will perform a thing. And now, as you notice, right, some of the fire imps here, they, they, are, they recover 30% the, the health because the damage was high enough to dig them down. And that's where, right, the counter attack buff from William helps to remove the remaining enemies that were recovered from the 30% health. And if your Natalia isn't strong enough, right, this is what will happen. The, this fire imp will survive and attack your heroes here. That's why you need to build your Natalia strong enough to wipe out all of the enemies so that they will recover 30% of their health and then Natalia can follow up for the second round of killing using the counter attack buff here. And then on this stage, William will perform the Gaia's a guy should be able to heal to, to prioritize on healing the, the allies because the allies now, the health is very, very low. And then he'll use his or the whole position on any of these any, uh, heroes here. And you need to also build Zidlin with sufficient focus, at least 80 to 100% focus to for him to land the Sundering Purgatory. This is really important as well so that you can deal sufficient damage to the boss. And then he will then use his Omen of Despise ultimate ability to apply the curse so that all of your, your heroes can deal double damage. Uh, actually, it's not the, the, the heroes is dealing double damage but the the boss itself will receive double damage after after the curse expires. So you need to deal as much damage before the before this curse debuff expires. This one is a unique debuff applied by Zidlin. Okay, so let's perform another attack from Opal here. And Natalia will do her thing. Okay, those are the most important parts. So now we can put this on auto. So as you notice, right, the, uh, the boss have uh, 3 bars of health for Helm Stage 3 and Helm Stage 4. If you're using this uh, strategy, right, you need to deal at least 1 bar of... You need to remove at least 1 bar of the boss health so that whenever the... So once the curse expires, right, the boss will also receive that amount of damage as well. Like on this round, the boss will die from the curse. And if the boss is... It's not able to be killed by the curse, right? Then your your team will fail because the when when Zidlin takes his turn on the on the round eight, no, on, after, uh, upon the round seven, Zidlin and the allies will die because of the bomb explosion. So that's basically it for the explanation on of this uh, battle walkthrough. So I'll perform a uh, auto battle to show you how fast it takes to run this uh, team composition. Alright, so at the start of the battle, William will go ahead with his defense down, followed by Zidlin with his ultimate, and then Opal will take her turn to trigger her ultimate so that she can perform her joint attack whenever her allies perform the attack. Then Natalia will clear off all the wave, leaving on one left. Then Zidlin will perform the attack and Opal should finish off this enemy. Okay, so let's move on to the wave 2. Do take note that Natalia should only attack once per wave within the first two waves. So with the help of the joint attack, Opal will be able to reduce the fire im health low enough so that Natalia can finish all of them within her ultimate attack here. So moving on to the wave 3 where the boss is located, he, he will summon at least around about 7 fire imps around him compared to Hell mode stage 1 and Hell mode stage 2. Then the following heroes will perform their attacks. Followed by Natalia, she will have 4 positive effect by herself and this allows her to attack all of the enemies. She must have at least 4, four positive effects on wave 3. And then, with the help of the counter attack, she'll be able to clear off the 5 imps that survive with the 30% health increase there. 
That's why it's really important to have at least the guys renewal healing ready at this wave so that we can take on the damage after the fire in attacks and then the guys renewal can heal off the allies here. So now as you can notice right the boss has this some sort of like purple cloud uh, on his tummy there. That is the Zidlin's curse debuff. So you need to deal as much damage as possible during the curse effect so that once the boss takes his turn before round 7 all of those damage that he has taken during the curse debuff will be multiplied by 2 so that's how you clear off the big boss in Ash Magistra so let me end the battle and there you have it so the average battle duration it takes is around about 2 minutes and 4 seconds not including the waiting time or the transition of the each battle in the auto battle here Alright, so let me quickly show you the gears and stats of each of the heroes so you can replicate this on your account. Alright, so this is the first hero that starts in the battle first, who is William. So let's check out his overall stats here. So uh, the, the stats to prioritize for William would be the speed, focus, and followed by health and defense. You want him to go first so that he can cast the defense down. And then some focus so he can apply the defense down uh, to prevent the enemies from resisting it. Ideally, this one should be close to 80 to 100 percent. Will be better so that it prevents the enemy from resisting the defense down, so that all of your damage dealers will be able to deal damage. For the speed, right? You do not need as high speed as this. Uh, basically, this is my build for my guild boss, so I just use it as it is. However, you don't. Uh, however, you just need speed above 150 to go before the boss as well as the fire imps around the boss, and then speed between him for him to go first in the battle. After that all of his allies can go 2nd, 3rd and 4th and then once you prior once you have sufficient speed and focus the next thing would be the health and defense ensure that the health for William it could be either lesser than Zidlin or more if you if you choose to have more uh, health than Zidlin right ideally this hero should be yet in a revival set so it allows him to take the enemy uh, the boss hits from the firebomb as well allowing him to uh, to heal himself so that he will not trigger the guy's renewal on the first and second wave of the Ash Magistra team. Because the, the, the bomb placed by the boss, right, is based on how much health the, the hero has. Alright, so let's quickly go through the gears. So basically, I, gear, I geared William in triple radar set to provide him with a 45 additional speed to his base speed. So let's quickly go through the equipment stats here. So this is the weapons with some attack, critical rate, speed, defense. And this is the helmet with some focus, health, critical rate and attack. If you want to deal more damage to the, the boss, right? Ideally, you can build him with uh, like, like a damage dealer with high amount of attack, critical rate and critical damage. And some speed and focus. So he's, he's like a... It's like he's playing two roles, which is a damage dealer as a, and as a debuffer role. Alright, so the next piece of equipment is the chest plate with some focus, triple roll upgrades on focus, critical rate and critical damage. And this is a speed boot with some health, defense and critical rate. And this is a health ring with the triple roll on speed, resistance and focus. And finally, this is a attack necklace with some health, focus and speed. Okay. So currently, I have already maxed out his glyphs as well as his abilities. It's really important to max out his abilities here. For the masteries, I do not add any books for him because it's not uh, it's not required for it to work. And then I have him to ascension two in order to benefit from this aura that provide that allows my damage dealers to do extra sixty percent damage uh, using their basic ability. This is really important so that Natalia can do sufficient damage to wipe out the enemies with her basic ability there. And, it, and it's also quite useful for Opal because most of her joint attacks are done through her basic ability as well. Making him the perfect synergy for this uh, damage dealers. Alright, so that's it for William. Let's move on to the second hero on the team, who is uh, Zidlin. Alright, so this is the second hero that goes second in the team, who is uh, Zidlin here. So ch let's check out his stats. So he has around about 21,703 health, which is slightly more than uh, William. 1475 defense, 219 speed, uh, some focus, close to 100%. And yeah, so that's basically it for Zidlin. So 
the reason uh, why I have uh, Zidlin have more health than William is because I'm currently gearing him in a revival set so she, so whenever the boss attacks Zidlin or the fire imps attack Zidlin during the first two waves then Zidlin can recover his health there to prevent the guy's renewal from occurring from the first two waves Alright, and oh yeah, another important thing to take note of is the 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 speed. So because right, you want him to have more speed than Natalia because there is uh there are some cases where Natalia uh, basic ability right, she uh she will be able to cast the speed buff on herself and that speed buff adds an additional thirty more speed. So currently I have my Natalia around one hundred and sixty four speed. So plus the 30 more speed, that means the Talia total speed will be 194. So it's best to have more speed than Natalia so that uh Zidlin will always go first so that he'll be able to apply that curse before Natalia performs her attack. This is really important as well. So you deal a maximum amount of damage during the curse. You want the Zidlin to apply the curse instead of Natalia cutting his turn there. Okay. Alright, so let's move on to the gears. So I'm currently gearing Zidlin with a Revival Set and Raider Set. Raider Set is useful to provide him with additional speed so he, he will not get cut in by Natalia basic ability a speed up buff. And for Revival Set, it restores 10% of his max health at the start of the turn or 20% if under 50% health. Alright, so let's quickly go through the gears. So this is the weapon with some health, focus, defense, critical rate. Uh, Zidlin does not do much damage, so ideally, you I would just recommend you to just focus on health, defense, and focus, and speed. These four main stats. And then moving on to the next piece of equipment, this is the helmet with some health, focus, critical rate, and resistance. And this is the chest plate with some health, attack, focus, and health, uh, flat health here. This is a speed boot with some attack, critical rate, health, and resistance. And then we have a health ring with a quadruple roll on focus and some resistance here. And finally, we have a health necklace with some speed, agility, focus, and health. Alright, so I've already maxed out his glyphs and abilities. For the masteries for Zidlin, you do not need any mastery books for him because basically mastery just uh, improve his uh, damage output. But uh, Zidlin is not a damage dealer so he will not be beneficial there. Uh, the most thing that he can benefit is through the health and defense, but it'll take a lot of books to get there. For the abilities, it's not really necessary unless you're using Zidlin for other purpose other than the Ash Magistral, Helmut Stage 3 or Helmut Stage 4. Alright, so that's basically it for Zidlin. Let's move on to our damage dealers, which are Opal and Natalia. Let's, hit, let's start with uh, Opal first. Alright, so this is my Opal. So let's check out her stats here for Ash Magistra Helmut Stage 3. So I currently have her at 5,324 attack with the help of uh, 1 Ascension to boost up her attack by 15%. And then I have her at speed at 165 to speed tune her to go before Natalia. And then as usual, damage dealer should have 100% critical rate to deal consistent to deal critical rate consistent uh to deal critical damage consistently. And she has around about 217 critical damage, which is pretty low. And then you do not need any focus resistance on her. Okay. And then let's uh, check out her gears. So currently I'm gearing her in an assassin set that allows her to deal 15% more damage to the main target and have a 50% chance of dealing additional 35% damage. And next will be the raider set that allows that boosts her base speed by 15 speed. Okay. So let's quickly go through the gears. So the first one is the weapon that has a double attack roll and so a cri critical rate, precision and focus. Focus is not useful for her because she doesn't apply any negative effects. And then we have the helmet with some focus, critical rate attack and flat stats attack. Ideally this one should be attack, critical rate and critical damage. And then this is the chest plate with some attack, critical damage, precision and resistance. And then we have the attack boots with some critical rate, speed, and critical damage. This is one of my best pieces for the assassin set. And then we have a critical rate ring with some speed, precision, critical damage, and focus. And finally, we have a attack necklace with some critical rate, speed, 
and some flash slash defense attack. This one is one of the worst assassin set that, that I'm using for Opal because I want to, her to be speed tuned so that she will go before Natalia. If you are able to build Natalia, uh, if you are able to build Opal with very high amount of uh, attack stats through the mastery system, then you, you can speed tune Opal to go after Natalia. This is also another case where you, uh, that I've already tested and, and it's also working, provided that your Opal can deal high amount of damage. And one way to do that is through the mastery books, where you can invest some mastery books to obtain the critical damage up by 20%, as well as uh, improving the, the main stats of your gears through this random stat up 1 and random stat up 2. I've invested one of the legendary books on Opal to enhance her ability perfect shot so that she'll be able to do ex uh, additional 10% more damage through her basic ability which is frequently used for the joint attack and it's also quite useful to uh, to use some legendary mastery books to improve her critical rate so that you can focus more critical damage and attack stats on Opal for her to deal more damage Okay, so that's basically it for her gears and mastery. Let's go quickly go through the glyphs. So her glyphs are all maxed out as well, and as and also her skills are all maxed. All right, so let's move on to the fourth and final hero on the team, who is uh, Natalia. All right, so this is my Natalia. She's the fourth hero that goes last in the team. So here are her total stats. She has around about six thousand two hundred seventy attack, hundred percent critical rate, three hundred and twelve percent critical damage and 164 speed. She's speed tuned to go last in the team. And also make sure that she's not too fast until she outspeeds your debuffers like William and Zidlin. So you need to play around with the speed. So currently I have her, I have her speed at 164 because I'm using her in other parts of the game such as like Void Tower Heart because Void Tower enemies need at least 160 speed and above. That's why I set her to at, at this speed at the moment. And yeah, that's basically it for her stats. And let's move on to the gears. So currently I'm gearing her in a double raider set to provide her with 30 additional speed as well as a guard set to trigger her arcane word passive ability. So this guard set provides the shield that equals to 30% of her max health for 3 turns at the start of the battle. And this one synergizes with her skill here as I mentioned earlier. The arcane ward, she needs the shield buff on herself so that she'll be able to trigger the attack up buff as well as the immune for two turns. Okay, that's the reason why I mentioned that she only needs to attack one time per wave. So during the boss wave, right, the cooldown will be reset, then she can cast the attack up buff and immune buff so that she has at least two buff from herself plus the shield and counter attack. In case the shield is depleted by the enemy attack, Zidlin will come in with his uh, continuous heal buff to provide Natalia at least 4 buff for her to finish off the 5 aims around the boss. This is really really important. She needs to only uh, reset her arcane ward or trigger her arcane ward only on the first wave as well as the third wave. She must not trigger her passive skill on the second wave. Alright, so let's uh, quickly go through the equipment, equipment stats here for Natalia. So this is the weapon. There's some attack, focus, critical rate and speed. Ideally, this one should be a critical damage uh, stats here. And this is the helmet with uh, double roll and attack, critical rate and double roll and critical damage. And some focus. And then we have the chest plate with double roll and attack as well as critical damage. Focus and health. Focus is not useful for her because she does not apply any... Uh, negative effects and this is a uh, attack necklace with a triple roll on critical rate once uh, flat stats on attack and critical damage and this is the critical damage ring with a double roll on attack and single roll on critical rate precision also is quite useful for her because it allows her to deal some damage against strong affinity heroes who are the wood affinity hero uh, enemies and last but not least, this is her attack necklace with uh, some focus, critical damage, and critical rate. Okay, so that's basically it for her gears. Her glyphs and abilities are all maxed out. In order to reach a higher amount of uh, attack stats, right, 
you need to uh, use mastery books on her. I have this um, testing. Actually, you do not need this high amount of uh, uh, damage. Maybe like 5,800 should be sufficient to at least wipe out all the enemies. But the higher attack you have, right, you will make your run much more consistent to wipe off all the fire imps so that their health will drop below 0% and recover through the passive skill to provide them with another 30% health. And with sufficient attack stats, you can nuke them down with, with just by using Natalia's basic ability. To, to make the run much more consistent, ideally this one should be like 6,600 and 3,000, uh, I mean 330% 300, critical damage. If you want to use uh, Natalia for the Helmut Stage 4, you need even higher attack stats as well as uh, critical damage stats. And to achieve that, you will need to use Fabled Gears that they introduced in Helmut Stage 3 as well as Helmut Stage 4. Because uh, Fabled Gears will provide additional attack stats on top of these uh, substats here. They can also provide attack stats, critical damage stats, speed, and so forth. Alright, so let me show you Natalia's uh, mastery here. So I've already invested around a couple of books and remaining around about 5 more books left. So her, her gear masteries is all maxed out. This is very very beneficial for her to improve her damage output and then her abilities she left one more upgrade from this arcane nova ability if i have this one book then she'll be able to use her ultimate ability much more often to deal more damage to the boss and also clean up the wave much more quickly and if you are able to max out this ability right you can use a, a different team composition for the helmet stage 4 which is uh, much more safer I think I'll create another subsequent video to cover that, that team formation. And then we have the physic mastery effect that boosts up her health, defense, critical damage. And then it also provides additional survivability to your health and defense stats because the more speed you have, it will be multiplied by 5 times to be added into your health. Uh, for defense, it will be half of speed. So you'll be added to the defense stats. But most importantly for the damage dealer is the higher amount of speed you have for Natalia, right? All of those speed will be added directly to the attack stats. It's like having like a, a semi-upgraded uh, semi weapon or extra weapon slot. So if you have a high amount of speed on Natalia, she will benefit from the additional attack stats there. Alright, so that's the end of my video covering how I clear the uh, Ash Magistra Helmet Stage 3. And I also use that team to clear Ash Magistra uh, Helmet Stage 4 as well, as you can see from my avatar stage here. I basically use the same team, same heroes as well as the same spells. The difference that I did for the stage 16 is, Opal is, uh, is speed tuned to go slower than Natalia, so that she can deal extra damage by from her, from her attacks by using a better necklace, attack necklace with some higher critical damage and critical rate. However, the damage is, uh, the, the win rate is not so consistent because my damage output from Natalia isn't high enough to wipe out the fire imps around the boss. Uh, the best case scenario is uh, is to use Fabled Gears for the uh, stage 16 for a more consistent run so that Natalia can use her basic ability as well as her ultimate ability to wipe out the enemies much more better and it also helps to get uh, Natalia to be fully mastered benefit from the additional attack from her speed boots I mean her, her speed stats there and also if you found this video helpful do give this video a thumbs up and if you are new to my channel you can click on the subscribe button and also ring the notification bell to stay up to date whenever I upload a new video to this channel if you'd like to support my work, I have a donation link in the video description below where you can donate to me or you can also become a monthly, subs uh, monthly subscriber by becoming a patron at my site at patreon.com slash iumlove And if you'd like to learn more about Awakened Chaos Era, I have a website at iumlove.net where I post a lot of uh, Awakened Chaos Era guides there. Alright, so thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!